Hello guys, Absolute Dollars here coming to you with another One Piece video and in today's One Piece video I have the round 3 of my locals and this is going to be another Sakazuki match guys. We're all testing for nationals at this point, trying to figure out what the best deck is, what do we want to play and honestly we're going pretty hard. Like my opponent, a lot of my opponents are playing Sakazuki whereas I'm one of the few Enel players because obviously I tried Sakazuki, I tried all of these other decks and they just didn't work but Enel seems to be the first deck of the format that's actually worked for me. So I'm playing Enel and it looks like I did win the dice roll so I am going to be going second and Sakazuki goes first discarding a Manshuri. I rest two, play Ashura, very good way to start the game, grabbing a Gadatsu so I'm probably going to be going on to the Starvation way to play here. He goes ahead and swings six. I go ahead and take it and get a Sanji trigger, which is very nice. Discarding that L4. He goes ahead and plays a Branu though. Looking at top three, discarding, a, getting a Great Eruption and getting rid of a Luchi and a Tashigi. He uses leader ability, discarding another Manchuri and also draws again. My turn here, we go ahead and swing five into life. And what are we gonna do after that? We could probably swing big. No, we're gonna go ahead and swing three with, well, another five with the Shura trying to clear board a bit because we know it's just going to get removed anyway so there's no point and then we go ahead and swing six as well so we're not going to go for the gadatsu play this game it seems which is kind of interesting like i f you would think i would choose to you know go for starvation play just because the starvation play makes a lot more sense when i've seen a gadatsu but for some reason i haven't this game so we he goes ahead and swings into the shura there swings five into the sanji which i do choose to counter and then he's just gonna go ahead and remove it anyway. Like this is this is why at times I'm just like, there's no real point in protecting my cards half the time against Sakazuki because they're just gonna get removed nine times out of ten. So <laughs> it's just like, this is why I swing with blockers, right? So we're gonna go ahead and swing six into life, play Gadatsu to remove of the Branu, and then pass turn. So we are establishing some board, making him use his decrease probably as well. He swings five into life, decreases the Gadatsu. We go ahead and hit a. Okay, we hit <laughs> something good, but he plays a Borsalino because we hit the Beige, which stops the Uchi from attacking. And then we go ahead and get our Don. We're up to eight Don now. He's got the Borsalino. We swing five into life. Is he going to counter it? He is going to go ahead and counter it. We're going to rest eight to go ahead and play the, yeah, the Katakuri. Now, something I actually like about Katakuri in this deck is that it enables us to go ahead and make it so we can kill the opponent's characters easier. Because think about it, we play Gadatsu, we play Yamato, we play all of these big characters that say, oh, my opponent's on two life? Well, if I have one and my opponent plays a four cost character, we can go ahead and drop a Yamato, kill a four cost because our opponent has like three life after playing a Katakuri and just clear the board really easy. I, I actually do like it quite a bit. But he's going to Ice Age and decrease with leader. Go ahead and put that to the bottom. Bro slightly de increase the Luchi and then he swings six into life well the big number into life I hit a Thunderbolt getting rid of the Luchi there honestly not much point in swinging into life but understandable I guess and he goes in and plays a Borsalino I do wish he played that Borsalino first to be honest but he didn't so it's fine so we're gonna swing five into life he does choose to take it we go ahead and rest seven to play an Anel and then we swing ten into life as well having him take that too and it looks like he might have a trigger. Okay, does he have a trigger? Like, what would he trigger here? Great Eruption? Like, what else is the deck? Oh, and he does. He triggers a Great Eruption, forcing me to trash a card. I trash a Yamato. Okay. So I got rid of a Yamato there. Interesting. And he goes ahead and Ice Ages the Anel. Goes ahead and tries to kill it with the Luchi. Do I let it die, though? That's the question. And I do choose to let it die, not wanting to get rid of cards from my hand. Okay, so he has five Don left. He can go ahead and, Okay, so he's going to play one to Great Eruption just to draw. Okay, and then he's going to go ahead and play a Branu, looking at the top three of his deck. Okay, okay. Anything good in that top three? He grabs potentially... What's he going to grab? Like, if he's thinking this long, it must be something really important like he might he must have like three really important choices and he grabs an ice age oh he had hina and Houndblaze as well okay i understand then he uses leader ability to go ahead and just got a Houndblaze to draw a card so he swings seven into life though and it looks like i'm debating on triggering a card 
And we do. We trigger a Satori, discarding a Sanji. Gaining a life back with discarding a Beige. Okay. So we go ahead and gain life. Well, sorry, we go ahead and restand our Dom, restand our leader. Okay. So it looks like I'm just having a debate right now on how I want to play this turn. We have three cards in hand, so we could have a, a, any number of different cards. We're going to rest nine, play Yamato, kill the Branu, gaining a life. Okay, so we get rid of a body, which is nice. Then we'll probably end up swinging six with our lead. No, we don't. Maybe it's because I don't want to give him that Borsalino, just because I know he has Ice Age in hand. Because if I give him the Borsalino, he just instantly removes the Yamato for free, which isn't really what I want him to do. So that's actually kind of an interesting situation. So he's going to rest five, play a Subbo, drawing two. And then going to be trashing two as well. Okay. Interesting. To be honest, like, this is, like, I've been realizing more and more while playing against Sakazuki, there are turns where you just shouldn't swing. Like, you, you gotta be really careful against Sakazuki players, where if they're just gonna remove your stuff anyway, yes, you do need to swing. But, like, if your character's somewhat higher costing, and you don't really need them to get hit to hit, or if you know, if with a nail, if you put something into life, like that Borsalino, you just gotta be very careful at times. Because right now we have three swings. We have a good chance of getting rid of both blockers anyway by just swinging. And if he does take the Borsalino, it's fine, right? So there's a lot of interesting play that you can do in certain situations against Sakazuki, with Anel especially. Okay, so it looks like he is just debating really hard on what he wants to trash. And he trashes a Rebecca, and I can't tell what the other card is. Oh no, he just trashed a Rebecca and a Tashigi. Okay. So he goes ahead and Ice Ages the Setori though, and Hound Blazes it. <clears throat> Most likely decreasing, increasing that Rob Lucci. Then he swings seven into life. Okay, so he didn't increase the Rob Lucci. He most likely increased the leader then. Okay. And then he passes turn. Okay, so I draw. So we've got ten. We're going to swing nine at life. Or nine into the Lucci. And it looks like he's debating if he wants to block. And he blocks. Okay, this was actually an interesting play during the game where he blocked my Yamato and I was very confused as to why he did that because there was no reason to block the Luchi swing just because if I take the Luchi he still has a 6k swing with that Sabo so this was actually a really confusing play in my opinion but we go ahead and swing six into life he does counter that pay nine to play another Yamato and then he has the Borsalino and a Luchi Okay, so he's going to rest straight 10 to play a 10-drop Kaido. Now, this I was actually like, damn, that is crazy when he played that. I couldn't believe it. That was like he drew for turn, got the 10-drop. Like, that is an absolute mental top deck there. But now he only has one blocker on board, four cards in hand. So he has to be able to counter this Yamato swing. Because if he blocks it, he just dies. So what is he going to do? He just takes it. Okay, so now we're probably going to go... 12 and 12. That looks like what we're going to do. And we go 12 again. And that is GG. Now, guys, this game could have gone really any other way. But honestly, he didn't need to block with the Sabo. He should have let the Luchi die that turn because it would have given him the extra blocker and more protection for follow up. He, we even talk about it now saying why he, why did you get rid of the Sabo when you had like a 6k swing with it anyway. There was no real reason to get rid of it. And it was just a really interesting point in the game where if he didn't do it, he could have survived potentially another turn and could have even won depending on the outcome of the game, right? So honestly, it was very interesting to see that he did that and it was could have been a very different game if he didn't But nonetheless, it was a very fun game to play and I hope you guys did enjoy it nonetheless But please don't forget to like comment and subscribe for more one piece content I'll see you guys in the next one for the finals of my locals and I'll see you later guys Absolute Doris signing out later on